Hey guys, this is Justin from BreakingACRE.com, and in today's video, what we're gonna do is break down the multifamily underwriting process into seven specific steps that you need to hit every time you analyze a multifamily deal. So if you're looking to buy a multifamily property on your own, or you're looking to break into real estate private equity and work for a multifamily investment firm, definitely stick around for this video. Now on this channel, we talk about real estate investing careers and real estate financial modeling. So if you're looking to break into the real estate investment industry for the first time, or just looking to advance your existing real estate investment career, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Now, having gone through the multifamily underwriting process thousands of times myself, underwriting multifamily deals throughout my career, what I've found is that many people get overwhelmed and overcomplicate the process of actually underwriting and analyzing a multifamily investment opportunity. So by the end of this video, you'll know seven of the most important things that you need to add to your next multifamily acquisition analysis to make sure that you're accurately valuing a multifamily deal. So let's start this off with number one and probably the most important piece of what you're going to be analyzing, and that's your in-place revenue. And to get that in-place revenue, you're going to need a current rent roll that has a list of all the tenants and all of the rent and other charges that those tenants are paying. And you're also going to want a trailing 12-month operating statement to make sure that you know all of the other income line items that have been generated at the property, like pet rent and storage rent, but you also wanna make sure that you can see what kind of vacancy the property has experienced and what kind of bad debt the property has experienced as well. Now, once you feel confident with your in-place base rent and the other income that you might generate at the property, the next step is to figure out what your in-place expenses are at the deal. And really what you're trying to do here is make an assumption about what your operating expenses are going to be for the entire duration of the time that you hold the property. And again, in this case, a trailing 12 month operating statement is what you need to figure out what operating expenses have been and what operating expenses might be in the future. Now, the biggest variable and wild card in your expenses is likely going to be your property taxes because oftentimes property taxes are reassessed upon sale. So make sure that you take that into account based on the city, county, state, and country that you're in to know what your property taxes are going to be and how that's going to affect your operating expenses while you hold the deal. Now, once you've made your assumptions about what your rent is going to be and what your expenses are going to be, the third thing that you need to do is make an assumption about what your construction expenses are going to be. So many multifamily investors will go into a multifamily deal with a plan to renovate the common areas or renovate the units at the property. And with that, there are obviously associated costs with that, and you need to make sure that you add that to your real estate financial model. So what that means is that you wanna make sure that you include any sort of renovation expenses that you might have, any sort of hard and soft costs that are included in that, and also the timing of all of those construction expenses, because that's going to affect when you can actually push rents and get those renovation premiums, and that will ultimately affect your investment returns. Now, once you have your revenues, your expenses, and your construction expenses, the fourth thing that you need to add is your assumptions for growth rates and for vacancy rates. So specifically, what do you think market rent growth is going to be over time? So if you buy an apartment building in San Francisco, California, if the average rent per unit is $2,500 per month, five or seven or 10 years down the road from now, that same unit may be renting for $3,000 or $3,250 or $3,500 per month. And you wanna be able to account for that in your real estate financial model when you're analyzing a deal. Same thing for your vacancy expenses. Most apartment buildings do not operate at 100% occupancy. So what is your vacancy rate assumption going to be based on what you're seeing in the market with comparable properties and how you plan to operate that property once you are the owner of that deal? Now, once you have your market growth rate, number five is what are those post renovation rents that you can achieve once you actually complete your renovation? So again, if you're buying an apartment complex where rents are $1,500 per month, and you believe that by renovating the unit interiors, you can actually charge $1,750 per month, you need to include that in your model as well as the timing of when that's going to happen, because that's going to have a huge effect on your cash flows and ultimately your internal rate of return and cash on cash returns 
on the deal. Now, once you've added all of those factors into your model, you have your operating assumptions in place. And what you need to do now is move on to your financing if you're planning on putting debt on that deal. Now, most commercial real estate investments, including multifamily deals, are bought with some sort of debt on that property. And so including your debt in your financial modeling is going to be key to accurately projecting out what your cash flows are going to be and what your returns are going to be on the deal. So this includes things like your loan amount, your loan term, your amortization period, your interest rate, any sort of interest only period that you might have on the deal, and also any sort of refinancing assumptions if you think you might refinance the deal three or five or seven years into your hold period. Now, last but not least, number seven actually ties all of this together, everything that you've added to your model up to this point, and that is solving for a valuation that actually makes sense for you. So if you were a multifamily broker and you looked at 10 offers that you got on the same property, chances are you'd have 10 different amounts that each potential buyer is willing to invest in that property. And the reason why is because every buyer has different return expectations and what they can pay for the deal is very dependent on what those return expectations are going to be. So once you have all of your assumptions in place, what you really need to do is come up with a purchase price that's going to give you the returns that you're targeting. So that could be a target internal rate of return. So maybe you want a 12% IRR over a five year hold period, or that might be a target cash on cash return where you want an average 8% cash on cash return over a 10 year period. Whatever that is for you, adjust that purchase price based on those assumptions that you made in order to create a valuation that makes sense for you and a purchase price that you feel comfortable at to buy that multifamily deal. So if you're feeling overwhelmed about how to actually analyze a multifamily deal, break it down into those seven steps because those seven steps are really the key things that you need to make sure that you add to any multifamily acquisition model. Now, if you wanna go into any more detail on how to actually underwrite a multifamily deal, how to work in a multifamily acquisition model, and how to actually underwrite a multifamily acquisition opportunity, I'd recommend checking out my course, The Complete Guide to Multifamily Real Estate Investing, where we go over the foundations of multifamily investing, all of the key return metrics that you're going to need to know, and also how to use a multifamily acquisition model to analyze new multifamily acquisition opportunities, and we'll even go through a case study in that course. So if you're interested in learning more, there's a link in the description below and you can click that button to enroll in the course. Now, if you like this video, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel and sharing this with anyone else who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.